The news circulating the continent about plans to buy 98,840 acres of land in Chaco, Paraguay, near the triple frontier, Bolivia, Br Brazil, Paraguay, is the talk of the town in these countries. Now I'll skip down here and uh, I'll just read this paragraph. Argentinian Adolfo Perez Escobar warned that the real war will be fought not for oil, but for water, and recalled that Aquafero Guadiana, I'm trying to do my Spanish accent, but there's a Spanish word here, uh, Guadia, and excuse my Spanish speaking friends if I mangled this, Guadiani, Aquafero, Aquafero means like an aquifer, is one of the largest underground water reserves in South America, running beneath Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay, larger than Texas and California together. Uh, the southern United States are already struggling with water shortages, asserted the 1980 Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize winner. So it could be, you know, conspiracy. One blogger said, look, you know, how are they going to ship water, you know, to the United States all the way from there? But you know what? If the rest of the world's scrambling for water, fresh water, and the Bush family's sitting on this giant aquifer, hey, 50 years from now, it might make a pretty big difference, you know? It's like we're, we're drilling for oil in places we would, would have never drilled for oil. All that oil uh, sands up there in Canada was not worth it until the price of oil went so high. And now we're ready to like, even like these pumps in, a, in a wells in California that were not profitable are profitable again. So if the price, if actually, could you imagine, like we no longer have tap water? and we're scrambling to just buy water to drink? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it all works out because of global warming and the water rising, but that'll be always seawater. Fresh, potable, potable, I'm sorry. Fresh, potable drinking water is already a problem in, in many, many parts of the world, third world countries. And we take it for granted here. Well, anyway, all right, now I want to leave you with some sort of serious political stuff. I mean, there's enough stuff going on with Obama. Oh, there's that new book out, Obamination, which is just another one of those lie-filled books to go after Obama. And, um, and I just want to, any, any of my friends on the right wing, please stop listening to Sean Hannity. Please acknowledge that Fox News is a propaganda is a propaganda wing of, of the Republican Party of the Bush administration. You know, Rush Limbaugh, he just speaks talking points to the Republican, the talking points of the Republican Party. You know, I mean, why, my right-wing friends, people with, with a brain in their head, um, would you want to say in your own echo chamber and only listen to, to people that believe what you want to believe? Of course, you know, that's why I listen to, like, you know, uh, Go to left-wing blogs and stuff for the same reason. All right, but I try to listen to both sides. But it's so, I mean, with with all the uh, the uh, the um, uh, fact checking out there, come on. With the true fact checkers, with the with the neutral parties, the the people that are actually care about the truth, Fox News has got such a terrible track record. Rush Limbaugh has a terrible track record. Michael Savage has an awful track record as far as getting the truth out there. And that's why I say, and I, I, I heard a, uh, a poll that said 57% of the American public would favor bringing back the Fairness Doctrine. Cheers. Bring back the Fairness Doctrine. And then the SEC chairman says, oh, but the Fairness Doctrine applied to the Internet. Oh, it'll just make things terrible. We're not talking about bringing the fairness doctrine to the internet. The internet is a free-for-all, which we want it to stay. We want it to stay because somebody like me, who's dirt poor, well, I'm not dirt poor, but I'm struggling, can, can get his opinion out there. YouTubers can get their opinion out there. It's, it's the most egalitarian of the media. The fairness doctrine applies to people that have money. It's not about the internet. Keep the internet free. We don't need any kind of oversight on the internet because we all know it's a free-for-all. And please, like I said, 
keep your filter in there. There's a lot of crap on the internet. But it's all, you know, it's kind of got a lot more equal time because it works itself out because there's so much freedom. But when the big corporations keep the internet free, when the big corporations start buying up the internet and limiting folks like us from blogging by having a, a, uh, a higher standard of, <clears throat> excuse me, but there's a two-tier system they want to advocate where if you pay extra money, you get extra bandwidth or something. I don't know exactly how it works, but they want to create a two-tier system for, for corporations and there's the rest of us. That's bullshit, okay? That's bullshit. Leave the internet as it is. Do not, and this whole privacy issue with the internet, that's bullshit too. But the fairness doctrine does not apply to the internet. It's a red herring. It's a straw man that they're trying to win the argument that the fairness doctrine is not doable when they start talking about you applying the fairness doctrine to the internet. No, the fairness doctrine is about applying it to big media, to the, bro to the airwaves, broadcasting, media, where um, and also the newspapers, but the newspapers are pretty, well, we pretty much know. Uh, newspapers is almost a different thing. But anyways, if you look into the history of the Fairness Doctrine, and I get these younger people are all like, oh, I can't have the Fairness Doctrine, it limits freedom of speech, la, la, la. What a bunch of crybabies. Because you don't even, you don't even know that the Fairness Doctrine goes back to the late 1940s. The 1940s, it goes back that far and was on up into the 80s. And it didn't, believe me, there was plenty of freedom of speech going on. And people like, oh yeah, this, you know, they would get dragged into court and everything, but it was out there. It was out there. Nobody was being shut up. We didn't have designated protest areas until after the Fairness Doctrine was abolished. Think about it, people. We need a Fairness Doctrine. All right. Should we go out with some music? Oh, I never have that where I know that I can cue up the music right anyway, and I'm not in the mood for it. And look, I almost, I almost finished all the cider. Here, look, I'll, I'll finish filling the glass. Oh, work's going to suck tomorrow, I tell you. You know, somebody said, well, why don't you do Fez Night on Saturdays? You know what? I don't know. For some reason, it just works on Sundays. And, uh, and I get started late because it doesn't feel right until the sun's actually going down. But anyway, I've tried to do Fez Nights earlier other times. I've really went out for a very long time, but thank you for watching. This is Citizen Kong. Have a great week. Cheers.